Hello, hello and welcome back. We have another landscape photo video at last. It has been a while. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's been so long since I've filmed. Um, but it's good to be back, good to be filming again. And I always say this, I'll film more and then I don't. So I'm really sorry for the false promises. But today we are doing a video. We're at Wentwood Forest in Wales. We're gonna do some autumnal photography. Uh, there's a few things I'd like to chat to you guys about. Um, some news and some plans over the winter and yeah this is going to be me getting back into filming again getting back into the swing of landscape photography finding my mojo again and seeing what we can find along the track So I'm really quite lucky. Um, I've walked barely a few meters into the path and we have this stunning walkway um, which is uh, sort of arched with uh, changing leaves of autumn. So uh, really lucky to have found this straight away considering I haven't been out shooting um, much recently. Uh, now that autumn's here, it is always a season I never miss when it comes to landscape photography. So talking you guys through, again, uh, my setup, why I've chosen this and what settings I'm on. So let's start off with our settings. I've done a couple of test shots and we are on, just get a quick snap, check the light is still right. So we're about one fifth of a second. Now I can be one fifth because as you can tell, it's completely still. There is not really much movement in the leaves. If there was wind, I'd have to increase my shutter speed. Um, I have had pictures, especially in my bluebell, um, my bluebell, I think it was my bluebell, yeah, my bluebell um, video. There were some great shots that I had, but because the shutter speed wasn't right, some of the leaves were moving and I'm not able to use those images. So make sure you have particular attention to detail when it comes to your shutter speed, the leaves and any wind. So at the moment, looking at this shot, um, zooming in to make sure that I check, check the leaves and there isn't any blur in my image. Next, moving on to aperture. So the aperture that I'm using is f8. This is a really good aperture because uh, it allows me to allow a bit more light into the, uh, into the image without compromising depth of field. I do want pretty much everything within the image to be in focus. I don't really want too much blur. Um, I could go higher to f11, but I find that would increase my shutter speed, which means I'd have to slow things down even more. And there is a little bit of wind or movement in the trees, as you can hear coming through now. 
Finally, we are on uh, ISO 100, which I try and keep as low as possible. I may bump this up to 200, but I find know the limits of your camera, know what you can um, shoot up to where there isn't too much noise in the image that could spoil it. So let's take this shot and I'll put the image on the screen. Let me know what you guys think of the first image of today. shouldn't have put my tripod away. Very lucky to come down the track and find a second composition within 30 seconds. This is a YouTube video like no other. How lucky am I today? I've come 30 seconds down the track and something's caught my eye. I really love abstract photography and it's something I want to do more of and as I've come up to this little pond I've seen the ripples um, in the water as it's quite still um, reflecting the light and the colours of the trees and they've got a mixture of greens and yellows and it just looks phenomenal so I've stopped to take this photo I'm going to get set up and see how it's looking so I quite like um, shooting with live view. I don't know about you guys, but it just helps when you're sort of picking your settings. Um, so going over to live view, I need to go quite low in my shutter speed. Um, and I don't think I can use live view because the light is so dark here. Live view only works um, sort of anything up to 1 30th of a second and I'm going to have to go lighter so my shutter speed is going to have to be slower. So let's do a quick test shot now. Wow. So even a fourth of a second is not slow enough. So let's go one second and see what that produces. slightly better. Uh, let's go a little bit slower and now crop in. I'm sort of happy I'm getting close to where I need to be. Let's try that. Yeah it's looking good. So here it's not so much of a problem if I'm going um, to a slower shutter speed. Uh, there isn't any leaves or trees that I want to be pin sharp or in focus. Um, this is kind of a mirage photo where it's reflecting um, the colours of, of the trees but it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to get everything in focus. I actually do want it to be quite blurry. So settings wise, 2 seconds, f8, ISO 200 because it is a little bit dark in here and I am focusing at 
105 mil. I wish landscape photography was this easy everywhere I went. <laughs> And that is the second shot of the day within the first five minutes of my walk. facing me so you can hear me uh yeah if i could record on the back of the camera i wish i could show you um sort of how i'm framing up and what i'm doing uh it's an old camera uh before i take this photo i wanted to talk about old cameras actually and this has only just come to mind as i mentioned it now uh i shoot on a um canon 5d mark ii and it is pretty old now um however i found that it's working really well for me and it's doing everything i need i take photos that are good enough for printing um i don't know how many megapixels it is i don't know if it really matters um i know in printing it does matter and if you're printing and blowing things up massive um for companies or for your own artwork then the more megapixels you have the the better quality of the image um but i guess at the moment i'm still quite uh, sort of a sapling when it comes to photography and this will do just fine for me now um, and a lot of people do go through new kit quite a lot and I personally I don't have that kind of money um, one of the blocks that I've actually had for my photography is not having a laptop that can process videos easily I've got a MacBook which is like a notebook MacBook it's not even a MacBook Pro uh, I use iMovie which is a basic free software uh, I'm really quite basic in a lot of kit that I have and I don't know if that's helpful just to share that information with some of you because it might sometimes feel like um, you have to invest a lot of money um, in order to be good at photography actually you really don't this is probably worth about three to five hundred pounds now um, my laptop which is really basic and I will upgrade, I need to upgrade it, um, £400 refurb, it's just not a lot of money really. Um, one thing that is holding me back is a laptop and filters, so I broke my polarizer and I want to upgrade my filter system to something that's a little bit more robust because that broke and something that's easy to use, I know there's some magnetic ones. If anyone can recommend some good filters um, and link to some videos that would be really helpful for me because I'm sort of saving up to buy those um, but yeah I, I, I don't have a lot of money and I have to be really frugal with what I spend my money on photography isn't about the kit photography is about getting outside getting to new locations and just taking pictures on whatever you have um, whether that's a phone because actually some of the test photos I take look really good or if you're using a basic camera I feel like um, I know there's probably some professional photographers watching this and <laughs> not not agreeing with me but you know ultimately it's what images and how you take them are more of rather than what you're using I personally think but I'm, some people may think I'm wrong uh, but yeah moving to this image let's talk a little bit about this photo so as we said earlier be super careful to make sure that your leaves are sharp there is wind here, I'm more um, open and, and exposed. So I've been between one tenth of a second, uh, F5, which is really quite low, but it's the best I've got. Um, and I've been switching between ISO 400 and even 600. It is quite dark in parts. Um, 
and one thing I won't sacrifice for sharpness is the exposure because you kind of need them both to be right. So yeah, this is the, I don't know how many photos we're on now, but we seem to be churning them out, which is always nice. And it is raining. As soon as there's wind, this is the wind I'm talking about comes through. Uh, I get absolutely hammered <laughs> with rain, which is always, always good fun. I don't mind rain. We all need a little bit of rain. Ah, oh, but it feels good to be out. It feels so good to be out. Uh, right, so let's talk about a couple of things. I'm going to move you over to some better light away from that image and away from the camera because we have some things to discuss. Um, sounds all serious, but really it's not. So, announcements. It's not raining anymore. So the first thing is I'm designing a calendar. I've done a calendar before, but I sent it to friends and family as like a gift for Christmas. So this time I'm getting it done professionally again and I'm going to put it up on my website for sale. So if you are interested in a calendar, I know a lot of photographers do them and you probably bought loads already <laughs> from the photographers that you follow. I have already, Thomas Heaton, I've got your calendar on the way. Although I gave you the wrong address, thank you for sending it back to me. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a calendar and if you haven't got one already or if you'd like one of mine to gift to someone, then um, you can follow the link um, in this video and check out my website. There's one thing I feel that um, I'm not very good at self-promotion. I do have prints online and I do have a website, but I never really link it or post much about it because I feel like I'm more here just to share the journey and experience. And I do have a job, so it's not I'm not here for the income, but actually I do need to kind of do something. <laughs> so just get my work out there and for people to appreciate it, like things are better in print, so why not make a calendar? So that's the first thing. The next thing, some of you that follow me on Instagram will have known that I posted about doing a trip around France or Scotland this year. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Um, I'm saving money. I'm trying to save for a house or a van, see what happens. But I am trying to save and I've got a deadline. So I'm, I'm not going to splurge the money on a camper van for two weeks around Scotland or France because I'm looking at about 1,000 to 1,500. That's not including fuel, food and just general living. So uh, yeah, that's, that's potentially sort of two grand I could use um, towards finding a place to live. It cut me off. <laughs> my battery is fine, but my SD card is not. It cut me off midway through because I ran out of space. I've had to sort of furiously delete some stuff in order to make room. Um, but that's the end of the announcements. That's everything um, that I think I can bore you guys with. Let's hit the track and do some more photography. Let's go. and uh, battery so I'm gonna finish this one here with this final image now this one is a small little sapling which has um, some tall giant trees surrounding it the leaves are on the turn it hasn't fully gone yellow but I really like the mix of colors so settings wise I'm on f8 um, one second around about a second and ISO, I have had to crank this one up to 200 because we're in a forest, so I'm between 200 and 400. 
Um, so I hope you like this last image. What I'm going to do for this video, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to go back to the car, have some lunch, and then I'm going to scout around and see what other photos I can get. And I'm going to add those at the end of the video with a voiceover. So I'm going to leave you here with this final image of this stunning little sapling. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, but I'll do a finale voiceover um, once we've taken a few more photos, had a nice cup of tea and continued exploring this beautiful ancient woodland. So I scouted round looking at um, different compositions. This location is really beautiful. On the turn of autumn, you've got a wonderful golden bracken, yellow leaves on the trees and this lovely emerald green. There's so much to give and exploring this location, it didn't take long before I found my next composition. This gem is another lone tree in the forest and I like this one more so than the last. And the reason being is that it's isolated against the green. It's colourful, it's vibrant and it really stands out. I quite like this one with the dappled light coming through in the centre of the image. I kept looking for more compositions. I followed a little track. So in this forest there are animal tracks that run throughout and makes it easy to navigate the forest and you're not damaging any of the foliage either. I followed the track to the end of this uh, opening where you had the light coming through and the dense woodland um, and there was lots of colourful trees in this section. Now this is just stunning. This scene is just took my breath away. I really love the light on the trees on the left hand side, the darkness, um, the colourful um, autumnal leaves that are coming through and it was a real challenge actually to try and isolate this composition. And the reason being is that as you can see on the top left hand corner the uh, skyline and the light is coming through. So I took two images, let me know which one you guys prefer. Um, I've made my own crop of these ones. Uh, the first one is just a standard, I think it's a four by six crop. And the second is the panoramic, but it's my own panoramic. <laughs> it won't fit any panoramic shot, but it's custom. And the reason being is that I just wanted to cut out that top part, but I also wanted to get the trees in so that they had a bit of a story. Um, I really like the uniformity of those trees. So that's the end of this vlog. Thank you guys for watching and following me. Please hit a like and subscribe to support my channel. And if you haven't already, head over to my website, check out my calendar um, and get yourself a calendar for 2022. Uh, thanks again. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Whenever that may be, it will be soon because I'm filming already. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Thank you.